Hey, 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 it's Adele from Let's Get Inky and today we're working on an art journal spread in my Dina Wakely media journal. I'm determined to get this bad boy finished because it's, I love the size of this journal so much but the pages just seem to keep multiplying and they won't stop multiplying and I just, I want to get this journal finished. There's nothing more satisfying than flipping through a finished notebook or a finished journal, nerdy as it sounds. Does anyone agree with me? Let me know in the comments that I'm not the only one that feels that that delight. Um, so I'm working on a little page and I wanted to use these Jane Davenport uh, serviettes. Well, they're called napkins. We call them serviettes here in Australia. Uh, but I wanted to, I kind of wanted to do a bit of a, not a cheat page, but I, I wanted to do a lot of background collage. And if you're, if you like the look of mixed media but you don't like getting painty, this technique would be great for you. I did end up getting painty as well, but you could easily do this same technique uh, by just layering down the napkins and not doing the painted part that I do. I actually recorded this while Aaron was doing a, my husband if you're new to this channel, uh, while he was doing a illustration live stream on his Twitch and I was watching him at the same time on my phone even though he was like five meters away from me and I was watching him uh, draw and it kind of got me inspired to get creative instead of just sitting on my bum on the couch which is what I was doing. So I also, if you're interested in illustration and watching sketchbook flips and things like that, uh, he live streams twice a week over on Twitch. He's Inky Beard over there and he also has a YouTube channel here too. So I could have just gone through and put the napkin on that top right hand side as well. And I, I could have done that, but I didn't. I wanted to make it difficult for myself, I guess. And so I grabbed some of my Dilutions paints, which is just, it's a, a thin type of acrylic paint. And I'm just doing a bit of a hodgepodge of colors. So I've got all different colors, pretty much all of the brighter tones uh, in the collection. And I'm just going through and uh, just doing little blocks of color. I am going to be covering up, I will warn you in advance, if you probably saw it in the thumbnail, but I am going to be covering up a lot of it. And I knew that in advance, which is why I'm not worrying about making it neat. I'm not really worrying about uh, the colors looking perfectly, if they're a bit streaky, if I haven't washed my paintbrush properly and there's a bit of the previous color on it, it's okay. I'm just having a play with color and if you're if you're new to mixed media this is a really really fun technique to do with black paint and stenciling because you don't have to worry about not that you ever have to worry art journaling is very free-flowing um, but you don't you really don't have to worry about making your paint look perfectly painted because you it's not about the blobs of paint themselves it's more so the color and the pattern that they bring through the holes in the stencil you'll see what I mean when I get to the stenciling part so I'm just adding more and more bits of color and then I do some kind of streaky lines uh, and I also I was going to add some bits with uh, the paint pens but I decided to do that later um, first I want to do some inking so I'm grabbing a new little cursive script uh, stamp that I bought I would have you would have seen it in my Brisbane Expo haul I think I'm pretty sure that go, that video is going up before this one and I'm just going through and stamping it randomly uh, I knew that the stencil that I was using using was was going to cover up most of that left hand page but maybe not the the very far left hand side might be just black paint it might you might not actually be able to see any of the colorful bits underneath so I didn't really do too much detail on the very far left hand side um, she says as she stamps all over the left hand side <laughs> oh, but I, I didn't I didn't really do much paint over there because I knew I was going to cover it up anyway so now I'm just going through my stash of background stamps. I keep all of my background stamps in a little container and I don't bother putting them on acrylic blocks. I just plonk them down on my page and it works really well because if I was to put it on an acrylic block, it would 
it would print very blocky, if that makes sense. It would, because it's stuck to the firm acrylic um, block, it would print a perfect rectangle of ink. And I don't want that. I want it to look a bit faded on the edges and a bit, you know, not perfect. That's that's a technical word, isn't it, Adele? So I've got this leaf stencil, which is a new one. I hadn't used it before, and it's very, very delicate. It's um, yes, it's very delicate, and I, my arm almost fell off doing this. Um, and I I sped I've sped this up, I think four times fast because you don't need to see this at, at double speed, otherwise you'll be bored silly um, so I'm just using a makeup sponge just to pounce the paint on and my tip for this which I didn't do straight away I used too much paint straight up on that first leaf right in the top right hand corner and when I do take the stencil away you can tell that the, the paint has kind of leaked underneath um, but my tip is to use barely any paint so put some paint on your sponge and then kind of pounce it on um, a different surface you can pounce it on uh, like some plastic packaging if you don't have one of these messy mats and just kind of make it, it it when when you look at the sponge it looks like there's barely enough paint on there it looks like it's it's not going to cover anything but it does it's it's all an illusion so then I'm just continuing that black paint slightly onto uh, the right hand side and I was going to do the leaves everywhere but then I changed my mind and I went a little art mad, hence the title. So I went through my stencil binder and I actually just filmed a recently a new um, video for my Patreon channel where I showed how I organized my stencils into this new binder. So if you're interested in uh, mixed media storage and art supply storage, have a check out my Patreon, which is in the description below. And I'm trying to figure out what my title is. These stencils are from Flutter by Designs and I hadn't used them before, but I've been wanting to for a while. And the thing that I really like about them is that they've got the outside of the letters, but they've also got, I'm sure there's a technical topography name for this, but they've got the innards of the letters as well, the, the in bits, like the the curve of the center of the R and the A, um, which makes it really handy when you're doing stenciling and you want to use it to outline or you want to add the, the center and you don't have to <laughs> guesstimate it as I usually would. It has just started, I don't know if you can hear that, but it has just started pouring rain, absolutely pouring rain in the background. Very unexpected. It's a, it's a funny day today. There's my giant head uh, looking over the top of my work. I'm trying to now use a Posca paint pen in like a turquoisey color. And I'm just filling in the centers of all of those um, letters. And I was, I was going to just outline it with the turquoise, but I felt like it wasn't popping enough. It wasn't, I don't know, it just looked a bit funny. So I ended up using my whiteout pen, which is correction fluid, and we just call them whiteout pens. Uh, and I'm very carefully whiting out the edges and I really think this was a good step because it, it did, you can see already, it really made the letters kind of pop a little bit more and not make them fade into that busy, busy background. I would recommend a whiteout pen if you've got a steady hand. Um, they are tricky. I've been using them for a long time. I used to use them in high school to write all over my school bag and my shoes and all sorts of things, my art sketchbook, all sorts of things that really shouldn't have had white out on them. And I, it does take a while to get used to them because you've really got to uh, squeeze them in a certain way to control the, the flow of the white out that uh, comes out the nozzle. So heads up if you do try them. It is a little bit tricky to get used to. Don't do it straight onto your project. Try on a, a practice piece of paper first. Then I decide to do something. Um, I don't regret it because it looks really cool. But my gosh, my hand was so dead at the end of this video. It was killing me. I traced around all of that stencil and 
they don't look as leafy anymore but I really really love the look of it it just is kind of a wild array of color and I I just love it I then used a my uniball signo chalk texture and it's uh, if you're new to my channel I used to have a wedding hire business where I did custom chalkboards for brides and events and I have a whole lot of these chalk textures that the the tips the nib of the texture or marker whatever you may call it there's lots of uh, Australian words coming out in this video sorry guys um, the tip of the texture is dead it's all fuzzy and gray from writing over blackboard paint but there's still a whole lot of white chalk ink inside the pen so I just like to use it for my splatters it's very messy though very very messy but I love it uh, then I'm going through my Tim Holtz small talk word stickers and I found a few that were appropriate to creating stuff and I'm outlining them in using my black food ball pen in a I think it's a 1.5 tip and then I felt like felt like my letters needed an extra pop of color they needed something and so I grabbed a hot pink uh, Posca paint pen in it's a very fine tip this one it's a very pointy tip and I'm just going through and adding an extra bit of outlining just on the left hand side of all of these letters including the center bits and it's really just to give it a bit of extra detail and make it a bit more interesting but this page is done it was a labor of love but it was worth it um, let me know if you like art journaling videos give this video a thumbs up I have filmed a few more art journaling videos so you'll see those over the next month or two and I can't wait until this art journal is finished and I can film a flip through for you guys over here as well thanks so much for joining in hope you get to get arty this week and I'll see you very soon bye